Hello and welcome back. Uh, today is the day. Today I'm going to modify thermal management system in this 2017 Chevy Bolt EV. For those who would like to know more information, uh, please check out my part two of the video where I described uh, via presentation uh, the technical uh, aspect of the modification, why am I doing it and how am I doing it in specific in the specific way. Um, in a previous video part 3 I was getting ready, I raised the vehicle and uh, I was uh, looking into how I want to specifically execute the, the diagram that I was proposing in video number 2. In the morning I woke up and the temperature was uh, less than 20 Fahrenheit, right now it's 24 Fahrenheit, so that's minus 4.5 degrees Celsius. So I resorted to be in my garage and I want to start today, Saturday, uh, because in case that I need uh, extra time I can finish up tomorrow, Sunday, uh, the temperature is supposed to be substantially warmer, but I don't want to start tomorrow. I may not finish today, but we'll see. Um, so let's get started. So first off, I'm going to open up cap of, of uh, the first r reservoir which is for the powertrain liquid. I will eventually open up this one which is the reservoir, the search tank for the battery. Next I'm going to remove screws for the bottom cover and uh, I will uh, detach the hoses. So now the cover is lowered and this is the pipe that will be now detached uh, this is the outgoing coolant from uh, the motor and it starts gushing here so i have to prepare my collection collection vessel This might be easy. Okay, as expected, that was a splash. But this tool is awesome. This is going to be nasty splash. Do I have something to hold this stuff? Yeah, let me get some box. That one was much more successful. It was also easier. It was a heck of easier. Okay. So this is the assembly with the valve. This is coming from the end of the powertrain from the motor. Um, and here 
this will go to the battery or will be uh, another piping. Right now, this is in the position for summer, which means that from the powertrain, it will go to the radiator. Um, for winter, this is the position for winter, right? So from the from the cool from the powertrain, it will go to the battery. Okay. This is the search tank on the front uh, passenger side of the vehicle, and. Uh, the inlet to it is coming from the upper part of the radiator and the outlet is going down to pump number one. This section with the check valve is a connection between the battery coolant line and the powertrain coolant line. The section of this drawing highlighted in red represents uh, this assembly. And then I just carried on and continued in the project focused on completion and unfortunately I didn't have much uh, resources to really hold a camera and record everything properly. Uh, there were lots of interesting moments when I was trying to reuse all the pipings and uh, uh, lots of troubleshooting here and there. I didn't have enough clamps so I had to actually find alternative clamps uh, in my garage but it was all very exciting. I was able to finish it up so 24 hours later lots of stress lots of uh, uh, hard work and uh, the project is completed so let me take you through the individual parts so let's start from the top this is the place where the original search tank for the powertrain used to be it's gone um, this cavity will be used to reach out down to reach the valve this is the valve switching between summer and uh, winter mode. Summer is kind of normal, okay? Here is the original search tank for the battery. Uh, it's still empty, I'm going to fill it up shortly. Here, I, I had to use another clamps here because I ran out of. The return to the search tank is from, uh, from the upper part of the radiator okay from the radiator it goes to the search tank what else can you see here this is the chiller I was not able to remove the hose here I wanted to use different one but uh, because it was not possible I had to resort to using the existing hose you can see that it's kind of bent here uh, but it still uh, should allow the, uh, the coolant to flow through um, here and this thing, it, with the red, you see, uh, this is the check valve. Um, down there, it goes to the inlet of pump two, which is for the battery, uh, uh, battery uh, pump. And here, the other end, after the check valve, is the exit from um, from the search tank. Um, here, okay. Um, and which goes down to another connection. Uh, let me go down there. there. Okay, this thing is the inlet to the pump number two. Um, the thing behind this is from the search tank. And from the search tank, it goes to the branch here. And from the branch, this way goes to pump number one, which uh, inlet, which is hard to see. The other side of the branch goes to uh, here, which is the check the check valve number two, and here is return of um, the the coolant from the powertrain. Um, you see, I have a blue uh, blue pipe here, and the reason is. I ran out of pipe, so I had to get uh, additional pipe from my local store. Here uh, is the valve, as seen from the bottom. This is pump number one, the powertrain pump, and the outlet from the pump number one goes here. Here it, it bends, and it goes up to the inlet uh, power uh, inverter, okay? Um, so, 
yeah uh, and uh, i uh, didn't have to make piping any further back uh this is the battery heater uh so i lucky that i didn't have to go that far uh so yeah that's that's where i am and uh let's start filling uh the system with uh with the coolant and of course we also need a fresh antifreeze this is the orange type for north american vehicles including gm uh, because it's always recommended to get fresh clean antifreeze so i have filled up the surge tank i turn on the vehicle and allowed the uh the coolant to enter the system it was not uninventful uh not that i got some surprise leaks or something no before uh the coolant could reach the pump for the for the powertrain uh the system detected something went wrong and it throwed error and it turned off the pump um i was lucky that i was able to clear the error and run it again but i had to do it like three times and essentially the problem is that i had to apply vacuum uh to the surge tank at the same time as the vehicle was turned on because uh it does run the pump for about you know a few seconds let's say 15 20 seconds um before it uh, senses uh, whether uh, there is a resistance or not and uh so i had to ask my wife to jump into the car um, um uh, and uh, and i was doing vacuum the system was filled up successfully we switched between winter and summer mode it worked just fine uh, it would run only under very specific conditions either the battery temperature is less than uh, 40 40 Fahrenheit 4 degrees Celsius or when the battery is fully charged and the temperature of the and, and the vehicle is still plugged in and the battery temperature is not what was the threshold 60 65 fahrenheit right 16 degrees celsius um that's when the pump turns is on so maybe uh when i'm finished charging today maybe um the battery is okay so that's another story so i'm charging the car right now and i'm charging it in the winter mode which means that the powertrain the the charging module it generates some heat right and now the heat doesn't go to radiator, but it goes to the battery. So I am watching the temperature of the battery, how quickly, if ever, it's going to go up. Um, and um, if it warms up, great. If it warms up too much, I have to switch to the summer mode to route the warm uh, um, fluid, uh, the, the coolant from, from the powertrain into the radiator as opposed to the battery. You see the, the, the charge is blinking. That's because the charging is happening. So keep watching. Now, parts remaining after the project. Uh, I have uh, two original hoses. Each of them are from, from pump to surge tank. It just happens. All other hoses were reused uh, for, uh, for the project. This is the surge tank for the powertrain. Uh, I started with six feet of uh, three quarter inch uh, rubber hose. This is what is left and I had to purchase extra two feet in my local store and they didn't have rubber so I purchased this uh, silicone which is better. I started with a pack of 12 elbow connectors. Uh, five are remaining and uh, I ran out of the clamps. These were like hot items because every time I had to use elbow connectors, I had to have for each of them clamp. And uh, every time I had um, check valve, I needed that as well. So I replaced on top of the system uh, some of these uh, clamps are nylon, plastic. I hope they will be okay. These are just uh, surplus that I have in my garage now part tools okay tools that were needed well some of them are general tools but let me start maybe with a drain pan uh, with power tool 
any power tool can make it um, a wrench tool set with sockets miscellaneous uh, mostly I was using 10 millimeter 12 millimeter 13 millimeter half inch I think I used 8 millimeter what is needed sometimes the extension to reach places or this extension has the wobble attachment okay so that it doesn't have to be perfectly straight it can be under angle this um, uh, water hose clamp removal tool was indispensable I had to purchase it specifically for this project it set me off $41 but it was well worth it I would much prefer that I can return it I have uh, these uh, pliers one screwdriver I didn't really need too much screwdriver that was helpful to remove the cap from the search tank and also to remove rivets there are a bunch of rivets knife to cut the hoses um, light any light oh rug because uh, there are some spills and uh, and oh okay so this is the wrench that can be used to generate vacuum just $13 and I have in my garage um, spare tubing that I would attach here uh, to the tip of the syringe and uh, the other tip actually I think I no I didn't cut I used the whole thing um, to the search tank and uh, to, to produce vacuum um, and uh, this wrench 10 millimeters So I would like to release one more episode uh, describing uh, how the system performs under various conditions, but just to give you a flash news. So the first, very first charging, um, uh, I was able to actually get an idea, but this chart represents charging under normal unmodified original conditions in Chevy Bolt. So you can see that the state of charge is going from very low to uh, 87% with hilltop, uh, for the um, Chevy Bolt and the ambient temperature is around 8.5 degrees Celsius uh, it's very stable over the night and the battery uh, increases the temperature only about one degree Celsius over the ambient as you can see the coolant temperature is going up it reaches you know over 20 degrees Celsius but there is no use of that heat after the modification, the chart looks completely different. As you can see, the temperature outside started about uh, uh, over 10 degrees, but then it dropped down. It uh, held about nine degrees, but then towards the morning, it actually continued dropping to eight degrees Celsius. The battery coolant, as you can see, increased its temperature, but it didn't go as much high. Why? Because it, it has given up the temperature to the battery and the battery started at 6 degrees Celsius and it ended up at 16, which is much better temperature, much higher. And for that reason, the battery heater didn't kick in when the charging was completed. Um, but after that, the battery and the coolant temperature actually decreased because there was nothing happening. This thermal management conversion was executed in early February 2023 but the video release is actually nine months later. So at this point, I have lots of lots of thermal data um, and uh, I hope that one day I will release yet another episode summarizing all the benefits. And I'm actually right now working on another uh, improvement for the thermal management. So guess what, stay tuned and thank you for watching.